everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. And every week, I invite a speaker to share a bit of inspiration, creativity, and their expertise in photography. If you haven't checked out the schedule for our upcoming presentations, be sure to check out the list on my website at lindanickel.com. Erin Randall is a coach, motivational speaker, and is here to laugh at me when I stumble over my words. And you can find her at admeliorracoaching.com. So say hello, Erin. Hello, Erin. And you, that was bang on correct. Good Love job. You. I can't think of <laughs> That's right. a private joke for the people that are in the room. I can't, I mispronounce everything. Um, so my guest tonight is Carolyn Watson. A still life and portrait photographer based in Creston, California. Her website, 16milesout.com, is a great place to spend a few minutes if you need a little inspiration and want to create little vignettes of art using botanicals, your grandma's china, or your own collection of sentimental treasures. In this session, My Still Life Story, Carolyn introduces us to the art of creating still life photography, She'll walk us through the basics of how to prepare for your project and shares her creative process, plus a few tips to help you assemble your own still life subjects. So welcome to the happiness hour, Carolyn. Um, I, I kind of mentioned a little earlier um, that, well, first of all, I'd never considered, never considered doing still life. And about six months ago, I had stumbled across um, an image that came through my Instagram feed by a guy named Stephen Mack. And he, I reached out to him and he came and he spoke and his presentation was creating one image. And he was basically uh, meticulously constructing this absolutely huge floral arrangement. And since then, I will admit that I've selfishly wanted to learn a little bit more about the subject. So I, and I admitted to you earlier, I wasn't sure where I found your work, but I think it might've been on Pinterest, but somehow I stumbled on it got to your website and just kind of was like, ah, I wonder if this lady would come and talk to the group. And when I sent you the message and you said, sure, I, I would, I'm always tickled when people say yes. And I get very excited when people give up their time to share what they, what they love and what they're doing. And when you do that, you're in you're basically inspiring other people to look at art a different way. And so with that, I want to welcome you to our group. So before you get started and, you know, with your presentation, please feel free to add anything to your intro that you'd like to share with us that I may have either skimmed over or forgot to, to say. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. Um, well, I'll just introduce myself again. I'm Carolyn Watson, and I do live on the central coast of California. Um, we've been here, well, I was born and raised here. So I lived in Texas for a little bit. I didn't uh, know that. Uh, yeah, up in Hearst. Um, but I've pretty much been here my whole life. I'm married and have been for 42 years and have three daughters and nine grandchildren. Okay. And with my girls really is how I got started in doing photography just taking pictures of them. And a lot of people liked my stuff that I was putting out of just my girls and suggested that I get into photography. And so with that, I, I kind of started playing around with it a little bit more and um, have made my way through, you know, various forms and I've ended up here at Still Life. Well, I, I kind of went through when I, when I'm, when I look at people's websites, I go through everything. I'm like a snooper. And oh. I was just kind of opening pages and reading, you know, some of your entries. And you you have a you have a touch, you have a, a flair. And I know that comes with having a creative eye. And so I don't know that a lot of people had a chance to to look you up and look at your work, but um, I think they're gonna get a great um, 
sampling of it because I, I kind of glimpsed at some of the images that you're going to share. So hopefully, guys, after after she finishes, I want you to go stalk her website and, and let me know if I led you astray. But with that, Carolyn, why don't we just jump right into it? Okay. All right. So um, let me just go ahead and get started here. I, uh, I wanted to just show you just kind of how I got started. So like I said, I, I started out taking pictures of my children. These are a couple of my granddaughters here. Um, but just taking pictures of my family and stuff is what got me going. And then um, I started, uh, people liked my work of my family and suggested that I do something with that. And so I started doing portrait photography and uh, this is just one of the portraits that I've taken. And I also actually really, before I did the portraits, I was interested in landscape photography. So I used to go out and do landscapes whenever I could, but it doesn't really fit that well with a family. So I don't know, I mean, maybe it does. It just didn't work out well for me. So I, wasn't really able to continue that like I would have liked to, uh, you know, the certain times of day that landscape photography is best taken at uh, didn't work good with trying to be here at dinner time and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so I didn't continue with that. But then I, uh, well, I started watching one of my grandsons full time and I didn't have time for any photography, not landscapes, not portraits or anything. And so I started doing a 365 day project and that's where this clock picture is from. And I started taking a lot of pictures like this, just of totally random things around the house. And while I enjoyed it and while I felt like I could make something like a clock look kind of pretty, I just really wanted to do something else. I, I was home all the time uh, watching my grandson actually like 11 hours a day and just wanted to, wanted to do something that had a little bit more meaning to it. Like Linda mentioned, I wanted to do, um, well, I started doing some things that had more personal things in them. So anyway, so I, I finished up my 365 day project and in the meantime began working on still life photography. And my style has definitely um, changed over time and my abilities have definitely changed over time. Uh, some of my first things I'm kind of embarrassed to even show. I'm, I don't really have any here, but um, it's just changed. So with daily practice, you know, you get better. And I do pretty much take photos every day. Um, sometimes for, I do a lot of photos in a day. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about each one of these images and maybe why I did them the way I did. Um, I usually take a lot of images of my props I don't just take like one or two. It's like a whole photo session when you do still life photography. So, I mean, I might take 50 pictures of the same props, but I change things around in them. And I will show you a series of pictures in a few minutes, but um, this one, uh, it's considered a flat lay. And so it's uh, obviously from the top down this is actually a couple of pieces of wood here. It's a fence board and it's my favorite backdrop. It's pretty heavy, but I keep it in one spot. So in putting together an image like this, I usually have a little something in mind. Maybe I have an inspirational image that I found either on Pinterest or someplace on, um, on Instagram my image usually doesn't turn out anything like the inspirational image, but they do inspire me. And so that's the key part. Um, I like books. I like old books. Um, and I like, I like real rustic elements and I like the soft and more romantic types of pieces like this cloth over here. 
And like I said, I didn't really have anything in mind when I was putting this together, but it just kind of all begins to fall together. Um, the main piece that I started with was the florals and those are often the thing that I get started with. And then I just try and build on it and um, place the items in a certain way. Uh, this book by itself would have just been a book. And so using the flowers to kind of frame the book to me is what makes it really stand out. And then the key, it's just kind of like a key into knowledge or into, you know, what's going to lie behind in that book. And I just, I always like to put a little piece of fabric or string or something that is kind of like for movement. Uh, this next image was taken with some of the same flowers that I had in the previous image. Because of the editing, they look a little bit more of a peachy kind of a color here. Um, but this one, really my main part of this image was the books. I'd gotten these books and I wanted to put them together in a picture because I wanted to be able to save it and um, just keep the books looking the way they look. And so then just to build on that, you know, I used the flowers because I had them and I like to make good use of my flowers when I have them and take lots of pictures. And then I just began to add other pieces into it. And you really never know what's gonna look good until you try. Um, I really love glass bottles. And so they kind of added to just kind of a little clear element here. You can see through them, not quite to the books, but kind of to the books. And then I added this little uh, metal watering can up at the top, just to give it a little bit more height. Because sometimes um, if you build on an image, it's like it's a true vignette. Um, I learned that at Pier 1. I used to work at Pier 1 and do visual merchandising there. So going from lower up to higher, it kind of makes your eye go all the way through the photo. And then I really like to have a little something blurred at the beginning, at the front of the image. So my focus is back here, somewhere around the books and the flowers and the little glass bottles. Um, it just kind of makes it interesting. And then this image here, um, the inspiration for this came from this lantern back here. It was actually a decoration that someone used at our church. And I asked her if I could borrow it because I knew it would make some sort of an interesting photo. I didn't really know what it would look like with these pink flowers because of the contrast and the color, total different color groups here. But there was just something about it that looked good together. And so I went ahead and put them together. Um, and they're obviously in the background. And I did say this is my was my main piece, but I didn't want my focus to be on that. So I've got it on this cute little spool that I bought in Texas one year um, with the scissors and um, have my string going here off to the side, again, to add movement to the image. And it's similar to the last one that I showed in that I've got the blur in the front, the sharp in the center, and then the blur back in the background. You won't find many of my images that are sharp all the way through. And I'm not really sure why that is, except that there's just something about that look. I love the soft look. A lot of people like to have everything sharp all the way through, but this is my preference here, just a little bit of sharpness. Okay, and then this one, uh, these peonies, Sometimes I forget what flowers are called. Uh, this one, uh, it's again on that same wooden backdrop. And I like to do things from different angles. If you saw all of the pictures that I have of this, you'll see that I've got them like straight on and from the side and all sorts of different things. But I kind of liked this angle coming from the top and going down and my focus is here on the flowers. Um, you know, me and flowers, I, I used to feel like flowers was such a waste of money. 
my husband would buy them for me and I would just think, oh my gosh, they're, you know, they're just going to be alive for a couple of days and then they're going to be gone. And, you know, how much do they cost? But now since I've been doing still life photography, I've realized that you can capture them and their beauty can last for so long uh, when you take pictures of them. And, you know, when you have a, a beautiful picture, you can print it and hang it on your wall and add to your decor in your home. These little scissors are one of my favorite props. Uh, you'll see them in a lot of my photos, maybe not tonight, but if you go through my Instagram, they're just kind of fun. They're rustic, they're different. Um, I enjoy using them quite a bit. Okay, and then this little basket, uh, this, I think I got this at a thrift store. I buy a lot of my props secondhand. And then this sweet little piece of, um, I don't know what that is, a little bit of lace work. It was a prize that I won from somebody who I follow on Instagram. Um, and then this little book, like I said before, I love books. So I like to capture them. Um, I just put it all together because the colors went well together. This red, maybe it's not quite red. It's kind of a deep pink. It's not quite the right color, but it seems to go well with it. And um, just gives a nice little story of, you know, maybe somebody walking home with a basket with flowers and their little book. Maybe they're going to have a little, you know, go sit under a tree or something. And, you know, it just kind of makes you use your imagination and picture what somebody else might be doing. And we've got the blur again. And then just the little pieces of flowers here. All of the little tiny detail just add to the image. Just various little things. Here's another one with some books um, and a pair of my glasses. So, but I could take a picture of it and I could preserve it in its original glory, looking so pretty like this with the flowers all nice and everything. Right now it's sitting on my counter, just all flat and no flowers. I, I don't know how to make it prop back up again, but I have at least this pretty picture of it. Um, so when I put this one together, the main piece I wanted was the flowers and this little cream pitcher here. And then I needed something for the background. So I could have just done this by itself and I've done plenty of pictures like that, but I wanted to add a little bit more depth to it. And so in order to add a little bit of depth, I like to put something back in the background. And so that's why I've got these books back here. They just add a little bit even though they're blurred, you can't see their titles or anything like that. That part's not even important. It's just, you've got the foreground and then you've got the background. And it makes you focus on the flower here that's sharp. And then same thing as the other images with the cloth in it. I like to keep a little something just to keep it soft. Um, gives movement, kind of makes your eye look you know throughout the image and see what you're seeing there i don't often like to use color in my cloths but sometimes i do i really tend to like a white or a cream cloth mostly the white carolyn there's a question um can you tell us how you were lighting this photo and maybe some of the other photos i use natural light completely oh wonderful i don't use any flash um Pretty much all of my images are taken next to a window, like this picture right here. Over on the right side is a window. It's a standard bedroom size window. I'm not sure what those are, four by five, something like that. So it lets in a lot of light coming in on the side. And um, you can tell, I'm gonna point with my finger. You can tell by looking at this right here that the light is coming in here and then the shadow is here. Right. So only sunlight. And then I also shoot pretty much all of my images um, around F 1.4. So as wide open as my lens will go, I use a 50 millimeter lens 
for all my still life photography. I, I tried other ones in the beginning, but the 50 millimeter seems to give the look that I really like. So F 1.4 and then, you know, I keep my focus. So then my focus is just here, which causes everything else to be blurred out. So since I've already interrupted you, there's a couple yeah. of questions that would be perfect for this part. Uh, Don wants to know, do you diffuse the light in any way? Uh, well, it kind of depends. Um, so it all depends on what time of day it is. So I pretty much do all my shooting in the morning where it's soft light coming in the window. So if there's any harsh light coming in, then it, it shines right onto, sorry, I'm pointing with my hands. Sorry. <laughs> it just, it will shine all over the props and it, sometimes it's okay. Um, let me just click over to this image real quick. You can see a little bit of shadow coming or light coming in through here. So this image is taken with the blinds closed. And so there is light coming in, but there's not much light coming in. And the light is high, the sun is high outside. And so it's causing a little bit of light to come down through the slats of the blinds right here. But I, I don't put, the only thing that I might do there to diffuse the light would be just to close the shades. And that's only if I'm wanting to shoot, say between 11 and three because that's when the, the light is much more harsh coming into the room. So let me interrupt with one more question. Yeah, um, Jamie, my interruptions. Okay, great. Jamie wants to know, how do you decide how to pick props and how, how do you decide the placement? Well, um, I have certain things that I like, um, just like everybody, I guess, and so I like to put together a little bit of rustic and a little bit of softer, maybe more romantic kinds of things. Um, and I love pink flowers. In my house, it's all fall colors, but for some reason my photography doesn't reflect that. So when I'm out, I always have my eye out for something rustic like this little tin can or like this little spool. Um, and I always am on the lookout for some sort of a pretty glass container. This container back here has a wire also going around it. Um, but I like funky little jars. I don't even know what this jar was from, um, but I like little jars. And so I just kind of collect those kinds of things. Um, and then putting them together, really it's just kind of trial and error. So I've just learned over time what goes good together. Like uh, this one image that I mentioned, I would not have thought to put these two together, but I happened to borrow this at the same time that these flowers were in bloom in my front yard. And when I put them together, it just looked so good. Now, it may not have looked that great when I first put it together, but when I edit, sometimes it totally changes the look of an image. So another thing that I do is when I shoot, I will shoot several shots and then I'll take my card out of my camera and I go to my computer and I do some editing. And if I really like it and like the look, then I go back and I do more shooting and then go back and edit again. So you kind of have to just play around with what looks good to you. Um, there are various rules as far as putting things together go, like keeping the numbers odd and that sort of thing. I don't know if I really stick to that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, rules are meant to be broken. So <laughs> the thing about photography is you wanna know the rules so that when you break them, you at least knew what the rules were to start with. Um, five items could have looked good in here, but I'm not sure what I would have left out. Something would have been missing 
in my opinion. So um, I don't know, does that answer that question? I think so, yeah. Okay. This next image was really almost a complete accident for me. Um, I didn't really plan it out that good. A friend of mine is an antique dealer. And so this little picture belongs to her. She loans me props here and there. And these flowers, like many of my flowers were quickly on their way out, but I wanted to get a couple more shots of them. You see the petals falling. That's just because it's, they're, you know, they're falling off naturally, but I just put these, put the flowers in and it, it just happened to turn out to me really pretty just the placement of them. And then I just put the cloth back in the background here. It's pretty bright. This picture is pretty bright, but it's again shot at 1.4. And then with the window wide open, probably earlier in the morning, which like I said, tends to be the time of day that I shoot. Okay, and then this, this one, um, whenever I use a glass jar, oops, I did that. I like to have water in my jar or in my vases. It may not mean much to you, but to me, it, it just adds a little bit more interest to the picture. And this one, I did three items. This backdrop is light on this side. And so sitting next to my window, it's still in natural light. Um, a little bit darker than what I normally do. Um, but the natural light coming into the window added to the lightness of this side of the backdrop just really gave it a very interesting and more dramatic look. So this is kind of a, a different kind of a still life. I, I'm not sure maybe if this is really considered still life, but it was planned out. It's just in my kitchen sink and I just have my set my orchid down in there. And then I had this bunch of flowers that I had just bought, actually a couple of different bunches of flowers, but all of the purple looked so pretty together. So I just put that all in to the sink and just got that nice picture. Um, I had to lighten it up a little bit in Lightroom because the uh, it was pretty dark here. It's still pretty dark, but I, I like the way that looked. And then this one I kind of already talked about a little bit. Um, as far as these props are concerned, I had another picture I did once that just had containers like this in it, but they were all empty. And I thought it might be kind of fun to do another picture like that, but with these flowers in it. This little teacup was a last minute thought because it had been sitting there from a previous session that I had done and already had the flower inside. Um, but I just thought I'd, well, the teacup was just sitting there on the table. So you kind of want to keep your eye out for what's just already sitting there because, you know, sometimes it just sparks something in you. And anyway, to me, it just was a nice contrast, this pretty white teacup with the more rustic pieces in the background. And then, like I said, the little bit of light coming in through the side. Okay, and then let's go over here. I wanted to show you the steps, uh, kind of my thought process on a particular image. So we're just gonna go through these kind of quickly. Uh, these are the pieces that I had planned on using in the image. These were all just sitting here. Um, I just took a quick picture of them. And so when I have props, I like to start, I like to, so I take a lot of pictures and I try to make them different because I like to post them all or lots of them on Instagram. So I start my picture out very simply with just a basic prop. This is unedited. This is just straight out of the camera. Um, you see that the light's coming in from the right side of the picture. And then I've got the shadows over here on the side. So I just started out just like that. This is just an old flower sifter, my rustic with my floral. And then I added in my fabric to it. And then this next picture has the fabric also, but just notice the difference in the angle, just a slight difference. I don't know if you can see that or if you noticed. So just a tiny little difference in the angle sometimes makes all the difference for the picture. So when I shoot, I try to shoot several different angles. That way 
when I look at it full screen, maybe I like one angle better than the other, or maybe I like all of them. I liked both of these, so I kept both. Okay, and then this one I added in the bottles. These don't have water in them this time, but I added in the bottles and a pair of scissors. I wasn't too sure about the scissors right there though, because as you can see, the scissors have the fabric coming through them. And I don't know, I don't know, something about that I just didn't like. So I moved the scissors over and placed them off to the side. And I like that look a whole lot better. Um, Linda mentioned a video that she just saw about of, of mine that I did about laying fabric. Somebody had asked me how I do that. To me, it's a very simple thing to do, but I guess for other people, it's not really that simple. So when you lay your fabric out, you just, for me, I open it up as big as it'll open. And then I just try and lay it down there gently onto the backdrop and then just kind of push it around a little bit. You don't want it to be flat. You want it to have these sections where it poofs up here and there. That way it adds texture shows movement and just adds a little bit more interest to the photo. Okay, and then I do watercolor, very simple watercolor like this. Um, and I have begun to really love putting my watercolor in with my still life. So I, I painted this specifically to go with these flowers. And so I like to add in some of that because it's another way to share what I love and preserve what I love. So after I did this picture, I thought uh, maybe I would want to make it a little bit more artistic um, and add in the paintbrush and my little palette there. It's blurred out, but you can still see it there. And then I went down low on this one. It's not one of my favorite images, but um, it is an angle that you can take. And you know, maybe, maybe if I had included a little bit more on the top, it would have been a little bit better. So this is just another angle that I did. Um, let me see if I can, oh, it doesn't really show there. Okay, so at the very back, at the back of this image, it's blurred out nicely so you can't see it, but there's actually a line back there because this, um, this is two pieces of white foam core board, just sitting one flat and then one up behind it. And so sometimes you see a line back there. And when I was, taking pictures of it, you could see the line. So I added in this little piece of cloth in the background just to cover that up a little bit better and to give it a little bit more texture. And then again, just another angle, another little angle on that one. And then this one, I decided to do a flat lay. So these flowers were getting close to being on their way out. And so I just snipped the tops off of them. I like to take them in all stages. I start with the flowers long, and then I cut them shorter and shorter, all depending on what it is I'm doing with them. So final stage is I can cut the tops of the flowers off and create some flat light images. These flowers, because of how big they are, needed to be completely flat and not just on their side. And then just snapped a couple of pictures, added in the paint tubes um, and got a nice little flat lay. Let me show you, there's not much comparison, but I wanna show you the difference between the, the uh, straight out of the camera, which is this one over on the right, and then the edited picture. So you see it's a little bit brighter, a little bit more clarity added to the floral and even to the, the flower sifter down here. And then just a little bit brighter, it's whiter, definitely whiter, whiter than this one. This one is, has more of a gray background. I mean, it's all white, but when you take the picture, sometimes it shows up a little bit gray. Carolyn, are you shooting raw? Yes. Okay. That which lets you manipulate a lot more. That's right. Everything in raw. Okay. Yeah, I don't shoot anything JPEG ever. I, I'm curious, do you, uh, are you tethered by chance from your, to, you know, your camera to your laptop so you can kind of see? Mm -mm. No, okay. No, I don't have a laptop. I have a okay. big, huge screen, so no. So this is just another image that's edited and you can see that it's um, a little bit crisper. I didn't do too much to these pictures when I did the editing. Um, these are all just basically, you know, they're all just the edits. 
Um, I want to show you real quick how I would go about editing one of these photos. So I'm in Lightroom, so I'm going to go over into the develop module. And honestly, one of the things that I like to do most is I like to um, use my presets. I've made a lot of presets. You can make your own too. They're super easy to make. Well, let me just go through a couple of these real quick so you can see what a difference a preset makes. Okay, so there's straight out of the camera. And then I'm just gonna hold the mouse over these. You can notice the slight changes. Maybe some of them will be drastic changes. Some of them will look good and some of them will be horrible. But it's kind of fun to see the differences. And all of these are ones that I've created myself. Okay, so some of them, you know, like I said, some of them are really good and some of them are really bad. So on these pictures, they didn't require much editing because I wanted to keep them pretty simple and pretty close to what they naturally looked like. But they definitely needed to be brightened up a little bit. So um, I'm just gonna lift up the exposure a little bit and I wanna add a little bit of texture to it. So I'm just over here on the right and just gonna lift up the texture and then maybe bump up the clarity a little bit, which is gonna make the lead or the petals stand out. Okay, so that's pretty close to what it was when I edited it for the, the other picture that you saw. Um, for those of you that want to know how to create a preset, all you do is once you've done your edits, so I've done all these edits over here, just a couple of edits actually on this one. Um, then you just wanna go up to your menu up at the top of Lightroom. I don't know if you can see that here on the screen, but it says develop. So you just click on develop and then the little window drops down and where it says new preset, you just click on new preset. And then you can name your preset We'll just say test. And then I created this group. So it's Carolyn V presets. And then I just leave all of this. Well, mine is all marked. So I want it to save any change that I made, whether it be in white balance, in the basic mode, tone curve, any of them. I only did a couple of edits, but you usually want to keep all of the edits that you, do, that you did. And then you just say create. So I'm just gonna reset this photo. Okay, I had cropped it previously, so let me recrop it. And then if I click on test, you'll see that it just goes right back to that. All right, and I think that that is all that I have to say. That was a lot, that was a lot. Okay, guys, uh, if you have any questions for Carolyn, Karen or Riley ask her a lot of questions because this is gonna help you and me later. Um, put them in the chat. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read a couple of comments only because I'm, um, I want you to know that she, Valerie is in the room and I'm looking for her thing. She is a landscape photographer, macro nature photographer. Mm -hmm. I would never, ever, ever uh, dream of her um, thinking that still life is something that she would consider. And she says, these, this setup is, the setup are, is gorgeous. And she's getting inspired. So that, oh. those are really strong words from oh. Val. That's really strong words from Valerie. She that's is so nice. someone that's outside all the time, all the time. So um, Julie says lovely images and they're very inspirational. Uh, there is a message from Sue that says these images are amazing and I really appreciate that you showed your process of staging the shoot which is what I really really benefited from because you know when I see your images I'm thinking okay she just laid it here and laid it here and laid it here and you've you created something but to actually hear you kind of take the steps through your process, it really does help um, somebody like me that is kind of a visual learner to, to see those, here's your picture, here your picture of flowers, and then you've just added these things as you, you've um, 
completed your image. So Karen is going to ask you, can you talk about the variety of backdrops that you use? Use or is this fabric or things that you have laying around the house? Uh, the fabrics I have purchased. I do have a few things that I have laying around the house, but they're mostly things that I've purchased. Uh, my most recent items, which uh, a couple you see in the pictures tonight, I bought on Etsy. Um, I can give you the name of that, Linda, if you want to put it someplace. Um, maybe yeah. with the video afterwards or something. Um, the other things, I just, I go to a lot of thrift stores and I don't spend much money on anything I buy, but I go to a lot of thrift stores and I just look for something rustic. And if I look for something rustic and add that to my props, then I have the florals that I buy and I do buy myself flowers probably a couple of times a week. Um, Cause now I believe they're very worth the money. Um, and I also use other things, which actually in these pictures, I don't think I showed anything that was like a special treasure, but I have some things like a, a little cream pitcher and saucer that was my grandma's. And I've taken pictures of that because I feel like, you know, what if this thing breaks mm -hmm. and I don't have it anymore, you know, so I have the picture of it. Um, so anything special around my house, you know, I pull things out of my decorations and stuff. But for the most part, I just either use those kinds of things or thrift store purchases. Okay. Um, so somebody uh, made a comment that she finds it really interested, interesting that you build on one prop for many, many different looks. Um, do you just kind of, how do you, how do you decide um, this is the prop I'm going to use today and then do you just shoot it all day long and are you adding things and creating mini images a day or are you kind of saying, this is my setup today and I'm, I'm going to work at it just to get one shot? I never do just one shot. Never, ever. Sure. Um, it kind of is different on each day. Um, sometimes I, I have one piece that has inspired me Maybe I have a brand new piece, you know, like say I just came home with that, um, that flower sifter and I want to use it for something. I like to use an unusual piece for a vase also, which you'll notice when you look at my Instagram. Um, so I might just take that and if I haven't bought flowers, then I look for something in my yard to go with it because it kind of needs flowers in a piece like that. And then really I... I set it out on the, the table where I do my shooting and I just kind of look around the room for what might go with it. And I have a lot of props. I have a whole section of, I have a whole bunch of props, lots of them. Um, so I'll pull one piece. Sometimes I'll look for pieces that match according to color. Um, I try to put together the soft and then the hard you know, something with, you know, like a piece of fabric with maybe a ceramic or a piece of glass or something like that. Um, so it just, you know, it just kind of depends on what's in front of me. Sometimes I'll be inspired or I'll think I'm inspired. Or I'll just, I know that I have the time to go shoot. And so I'll go back there and I'll try and take some pictures, but then nothing comes to me. And so I just walk away. I leave my stuff sitting there. I walk away. And I just kind of think about it. I've got it in the back of my head. You know, I've got these pretty pink flowers. I've got this container and what can I do with it? And then I just go back and something comes and I start shooting. And I usually, um, I might spend about an hour on a session with certain props. And some of that's back and forth to the computer. Cause I, I always go back and forth to the computer and take a look and do a little editing before I finish. I'm I don't see any other questions in the chat room. So I'm going to ask you to close this out. Um, what is your favorite prop that you tend to use over and over? And then two, um, leave us with some words that get us, I'm already kind of inspired 
now get me motivated? Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have one specific prop. Maybe, I guess I would say the fabric is something that I use over okay. and over and the tin cans. Okay. So I use those over and over uh, to try and get you to be inspired. So I've been doing this for about five years. And like I said, that my first images were totally simple. They were things like just a clock sitting on a counter or something like that. And okay, so in the beginning, somebody told me that still life was a very relaxing thing to do. And I started doing still life and it was like the furthest thing from relaxing for me. It was stressing me out. I was dropping things and knocking stuff over and you know, it just wasn't going smooth. It wasn't relaxing at all. But as I've worked on it over time, just like with anything else that you do, you begin to develop skill and you begin to get better and better at it. And so just keep practicing. If it's something that you're interested in doing, just play around with it. There's no pressure. You're doing it for you. That's what I do. I don't do it for anybody else. I mean, I do shoot for some for particular places, but um, it's for me. And if nobody likes the images, then nobody likes the images. You know, it's all stuff that I like. And so if you do what looks good to you, then you'll be happy with what you've done. You'll love it and you'll want to do more. And, and, you know, you use a lot of flowers and, and delicate vases and, and bottles, but I think still life, especially a winter project, you can pull anything, whether it's maybe, I don't know, your, your tackle box. It just seems like it's yes. um, a, a medium, I, I don't know if that's the right word, where the sky is the limit. You know, dig in your, your, your drawers and pull out maybe your mom's jewelry or pen collection or something. And yes. it just seems limit, limitless. It is. You can take pictures of whatever you want to take pictures of. Whatever makes you happy, whatever you love. Yeah. Just pull it out and start shooting. So I'm going to chime in with you on this, Mika. Uh, Mika says, this was such a wonderful presentation. And Carolyn, you were a fantastic teacher. Oh, and yeah. I, I'm going to echo that. And, and thank you so much for taking the time and sharing what you obviously love. Because thank you. Um, I can see that in your images. And I hope that um, the people in the room, you know, do too. So guys, you can find Carolyn at 16milesout.com where you're going to find her online classes, ebooks, and she's got a blog. So if you're on Instagram, look, at, look for her at 16milesout. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'd like to invite you to check out my YouTube channel, which is Linda Nichols Happiness Hour, where, you're, where you'll find our previous sessions. And as promised, we are doubling up this week. So Don Simpson is going to teach us a new technique that produces high resolution images without using a camera. So please join us tomorrow for his presentation, The Art of Skenography. So until next time, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we see you again soon. Mm -hmm.